I have the pleasure of speaking with Atul Sabharwal from SNP Interactive. How are you today? I'm good, Tracy. How are you? Atul, you just put out some news release that I was particularly impressed by, um, and I think it reflects your sales model. And if I understand correctly, this is one of your competitive advantages for SNP and your shareholders. Um, you announced 17 new promotions-based uh, programs just this last month uh, for nine unique clients and 16 unique brands across uh, uh, you know, U.S., Canada, and the U.K., I believe, and eight of which were repeat clients expanding their promotion efforts through SNP. Now, is this basically you know, one of the many benefits uh, for SNP and your revenue is that once you get into the company, these Fortune 500 advertisers, you start expanding into other products? Right, sure. So, you know, all of our clients are Fortune 500 clients like Johnson & Johnson, L'Oreal, Clorox, household names and some non-household names. But basically, we focused our company on building out a platform that can help these multi-brand companies, um, you know, get a really consolidated view of their data across the promotion spend that they have. So, you know, we have a huge multiplier effect in our business where if I break into someone like a Procter & Gamble or a Unilever, um, think about Procter & Gamble. It is nothing but a collection of over 200 brands or a L'Oreal or a Anheuser-Busch. You know, they have multiple brands of beer, right? So by definition, the minute I break into one brand that has its own budget, you suddenly, you know, qualified yourself with other brands and the sales process becomes much easier because you just get a reference into the other brand manager and, you know, that's how our business um, keeps multiplying. Also, there's a second multiplier effect that happens because we only work with really large advertising agencies. So take, take, the, take Omnicom, for example, the second largest advertising group in the world. You know, you start working for one of the agencies and that agency basically has relationships with other agencies within the world of Omnicom and they don't compete for the same client. So, you know, by definition, when I break into one agency of Omnicom, I've broken into multiple agencies of Omnicom. But the beautiful part is that agency of Omnicom would probably have multiple clients. So if I do work with one client in one agency, suddenly not only do I have a multiplier effect on the brand side because other brands see what we do and they work with different agencies, but then other agencies see what we do within that same group. So it just becomes a vicious circle of, you know, um, more and more work comes our way without much investment in sales and marketing once we've broken in. Okay, so I love this sales multiplier uh, formula that you have. Um, and, and Am I correct to understand that you have 15 million plus in your revenue pipeline right now and about 9 million in the bank? So we, we, we have, that's true, we do have 9 million in the bank, um, probably a little bit more than that in terms of U.S. dollars cash. Um, we do we do have a really huge pipeline, so it's not necessarily a revenue pipeline, but it's a pipeline of opportunity that we are pursuing. Some of which I hope most of which breaks into actually boils down to actually revenue, right? Um, but the way we recognize revenue is very conservative. We go from a pipeline, which is an opportunity that we have spec'd out, which then turns into a legal booking, which then gets recognized as revenue based on you know IFRS revenue recognition principles. So not all of that 15 million will turn into revenue. Um, but a lot of it will, and that pipeline keeps going, keeps growing as, you know, that pipeline is for 2016, and we're just in the first month of 2016 right now. So in addition to the sales mood multiplier effect, which I, I, I'm, just, I'm just loving about SNP, but also a lot of people are talking about your competitive technology or your disruptive technology, and in particular, uh, the algorithms that you are now putting together with this technology for understanding about the end user. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so, you know, we, um, you know, going back to your first question today, you know, we, we figured out that advertising has a big measurement problem, right? And what we are trying to do here is solve that measurement problem. But in trying to solve that measurement problem, what we stumbled on was this industry called promotion marketing, where, you know, we try and give brands, we, what we realized was that, you know, you, Tracy, and me, we might consume Colgate toothpaste every morning, but we're not actually customers of the toothpaste company. We are customers of the retail stores that we shop at, Right. And the retailers are the customers of the brands, right? So even though we buy Colgate, we're not customers of Colgate. We are customers of, say, Walmart or Loblos or wherever you shop at, right? So, you know, what we realized is that brands like a Colgate, they have very little insight into who you are, Tracy, and who I am and what I buy, where I buy it, and what I spend on it, because no one in their right mind would give their customers data to a vendor, right? So think about it even for your own business, right? Would you ever reveal who your customers are to people who supply you with stuff, right? So in the same way in the retail environment, right, um, the brands have no idea about you and me, but their business is really driven by the fact that you and me have to go shop somewhere and buy their products. So, you know, in, in trying to solve the measurement problem of adverti advertising, we realize that 
there's this huge massive data gap in the industry where brands have very little idea about you and me and our platform you know lends itself very simply to help brands understand what your shopping habits are where you shop what you buy what else you buy and in the process of us collecting that data we actually understand what drove you to shop which in effect is the advertising spend that these advertisers that these brands have and we can now give them for the first time a full view of all of the data starting from hey if i spent $5000 on google $5000 on facebook and $5000 on say a local television commercial which one actually drove tracy into a store but not only do we stop there we also go on and say hey which store did tracy go into what did she buy what else did she buy and how much did she spend which is data that they've never seen in their life before so we essentially are solving two simple problems for brands right one is we're solving an age old problem which is hey does advertising work and what advertising works for me um because in the olden days if you put money on television or print all you would do is hope and pray that people you know bought your product and when google and facebook came along you'd put money on digital media but you'd stop at okay people clicked on my ad people saw a video online but so what did they walk into a store and buy something we answer those questions so so we solve not only the measurement of advertising we got that problem but we also help brands understand in more detail who their customers are and what the actual shopping habits are Well, I can certainly see why uh, you have so many shareholders that love SNP. Thank you, Atul, for joining us today. Thanks for having me.